welcome to the Selfish Podcast. I am your host, Luke Greenheart, and this podcast is going to cover everything self, self love, self care, and overall self development. I will be talking about my own personal experiences and perspective, as well as interviewing guests on their journey, their life, and their personal experience. Stay tuned, enjoy the show. I appreciate you being here. All right, first of all, I want to thank. Anthony for being here. I have a lot of appreciation for him and gratitude and love and I'm so happy to share him with the listeners here. Hope you have an open heart and you're ready to listen to someone's self, to their life and to their journey of self-development. So Anthony, for those that don't know you, I want to know a little bit more about you myself and be selfish as well as I want to share you with the world. You're a kind and compassionate person and I think Everyone needs more of them in their life. So that's why I've brought you on my show to share you with everyone else. And first, can you just introduce a little bit about yourself? And um, I want to know about your childhood. I want to know about, paint a picture of what your town was like, where you grew up and how your childhood was like pre-10 years old. Okay. Well, thank you very much. That's a very nice introduction. <laughs> and um, sure, yeah, right. We want to go to my childhood or like who I am, where I grew up. My name is Anthony Farrow. I grew up in uh, London, you might have heard of it. Um, so uh, I grew up in a small sort of flat, uh, actually was living in a little bungalow before moving to a flat, but I don't remember that because it was only first half year of my life. Um, so yeah, grew up in a place called Carsholton, which means peaceful fields. And, nice. um, <laughs> yeah, uh, my father was a, um, like an electrical engineer, uh, who worked for British telecom communications, like laying all the foundations for our, um, you know, wireless networks and, and eventually, but like, you know, the original kind of phone networks and communications networks. For oh, interesting. Networks. Um, and my mother worked in, uh, the, uh, travel industry so that's just what they did and and obviously they're the main uh influential factors in my life when i was young i was a, a kid full of energy i would be uh, a kid who who just kept uh, the parents up all night and, <laughs> and kind of during the day just took your eye out for me for a second and i would run off somewhere else um i remember having a lot of um yeah just a lot of joy and and um, desire for life like I wanted to experience everything I wanted to see everything I wanted to run and touch everything and all that sort of stuff yeah. Um, oh, nice. um, yeah and then so there was like that and obviously you know I think that every life is balanced in some way and for me like I had like this kind of boundless joy and, and like energy just like a little live wire all the time but then as as I grew maybe like past three or four years old throughout four four or five years old to um, I mean, to, to when it kind of tapered off when I was around 12, 13, I had these panic attacks, like these real severe anxiety attacks. Um, and they started really early. Yeah, quite early. Like um, <clears throat> there was a, there were a couple of things that were like kind of um, bringing me, I guess, like any any like pain and suffering, which was, was like a family curse. They were like, you know, quotation marks, family curse of, of uh, nose bleeding as well. Like I just get nosebleeds randomly and really excessive. Um like especially uh, in the mornings or um, late at night or in the summer when it was hot, I seemed to get them more. But there was those and, and in the nighttime, I'd get anxiety attacks. So I'd wake up and have this intense feeling. My heart would be racing, have this intense feeling that um, time and space are like collapsing in or um, expanding at a rate that's just beyond my reach. So it would be kind of overlapping and paradoxical in a sense. That's why it would feel so strange and and. It's just such a bizarre feeling. Yeah, um, it must have caused you a lot, a lot of pressure and a lot of stress when you're that age as well to just even have that contemplation, to have that feeling. Yeah, I didn't had no idea what was going on. I mean, now now I've learned to like balance these things. But going back to me as a as a child, I think that um, yeah, I had this sort of <laughs> um, what's the word like dualistic um, kind of life or polar opposite, yeah, polarized like, life. Super joy at some points, and then, and then panic attacks. Intense, the panic, yeah. <laughs> interesting and how how was your school experience how do you remember school school i was always like the the joker you know like i was always the kid who would try and make a laugh i would do things to get laughs out of people and um uh that would usually be at the detriment of you know the the, the classroom trying to learn or something so yeah. i would get in trouble for that or like you know for causing mischief and things like that um but i was always uh you know like 
good. I, I did things in the, in the class that they wanted me to do. I did the homework and I was, uh, you know, I didn't like kind of fall behind. I was always told that typical sentence, which is something like, you've got so much potential, but if only you applied yourself, you could do so much more. Yeah, I, I got that. <laughs> I got that. And, if, and you're just like your brother or you don't want to be like your brother. Because I had an older <laughs> brother who went to the same school. It was basically the same. Oh, yeah, nice. And uh, do you remember what you, what did you what was your first thing like you wanted to aspire to be or something you thought, oh, do you know, when I'm older, I want to be that? A uh, fireman. I remember I wanted to be a fireman. I think, um, you know, we were talking just briefly before this about some um, kind of shows and movies that are out of the time and how they influence us. I was um, once I was always looking to be like a like a serviceman. Like I remember there was like Postman Pat, there was like Fireman Sam and there were all these like uh, um, Captain Scarlet, International Rescue, uh, Thunderbirds, all these things were out at that time. And so, it, it, you know, I had this kind of feeling like I would like to do something that uh, is good for everyone, um, but also like makes me feel like I'm, um, yeah, like doing something central to society in that way. Oh, so so you, you, was that, one of the first things. Okay. And you kind of answered my question. I was going to ask you, like, what feeling was you hoping to achieve from becoming that? And uh, yeah, well, I think you yeah, really like, answered that. You wanted to serve. <laughs> but and, that was uh, leading me. Like, this is a, another part of, of, like, my, I guess, the cornerstone of one of my personality traits. Uh, when I was young, I, I, I wanted that. But it quickly changed, you know. And I, I wanted to be, um, like, a, an adventurer or explorer. I wanted to be... Uh, a photographer or you know like as i as i grew up the obviously the the thing i wanted to be developed and changed but it was always changing to like what i thought was the next best thing or the bigger thing yep. the more developed thing um yeah and, and spreading myself around like trying to experience and, and experiment with every new uh piece of life that i could find right yeah like you say a lot of energy <laughs> to mm -hmm. just keep going yeah and i was going to ask you what was your first struggle in life but it sounds like it was the panic attacks for your first struggle yeah, um, they unless were, nothing so... else comes to your mind, but how, how did you how did you sort of overcome that? If you overcome it, and mm -hmm. what do you think that gave you now, later in life? What did that sort of gift you, as I would see it, mm -hmm. and if you see it that way? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, uh, so what uh, initially happened uh, because these were usually at night, I would essentially like wake up, uh, I'd start screaming, or it would just like come on really intensely, and I would just um, get like very int uh, intense breathing like <sighs> mm -hmm. and just feel like feel like something's going to happen but but it's just like in this constant state of of um suspension and so i would go into the front room into the living room and my parents would say you know try and ask me questions about what it is try and comfort me try and get me things to eat or drink and i would be um specifically focused like on it was a really like visual thing it was a real intense um uh, like fluctuation like my heart was racing so I, I didn't know about the body and how these things work or what what's even going on but I just remember now like that's I just feel intense vibration and I'm looking around and things are just like fluctuating and colors are flying around and it feels like stuff is coming towards me and going away from me rooms especially were like the most fear inducing things possible so I started mm, picking up on that that was the first kind of like little signal which I was like what's that about when I start thinking about this when I'm a teenager. So why am I, why am I, why is there something bad about this corner where three points meet? And it would be that, you know, if you look at a room with a light on, the corner is the, the spot that's darkest in the room. It's the only spot yeah. that has like the darkest area. Um, and so it kind of started unfolding a certain level of understanding for me. And that's something that's like, we all have this. It's all like personal. Every, every experience we have is like kind of linked into our own magical mathematic of life that we only have the experience and past to understand. So for me, it started to link together some things that I'd experienced. It started to show me what um, avenue of thought I should go down to heal this trauma to whatever, whatever this pain and suffering is that's coming from this experience. Um, so then to answer the second part of the question is, is how I kind of resolved this, um, to put it in a nutshell, it was, it was meditation, it's stillness, um, and just being aware of the mind. Um, so I mean, what sort of, what sort um, of age would you be when you got to that point where you realized you could, where, how did you find out about meditation and what sort of age were you at that time when you attempted it and you realized this is changing something? Hmm. 
we yeah so at first it was more of a like like contemplative thought or like um like a, an awareness an observation of your thoughts which is kind of how meditation begins really you you just want to observe what you're thinking why you think you know and, and just like see what's happening um and uh, don't link it immediately to an emotional reaction and act on it that's that's the the idea and so i started just doing that i think um and and it was never a, i you know I, I know you're looking for like an age where i started doing this thing but it was never like that it was a gradual shift that changed um and i would say i got another panic attack when i was about when i was 16 and it was around that time when i was like okay what what is this happening and i really dove deeper into this level of um into another level of what the mind is about so around 16 17 is when i would actually start meditating and um yeah and you know having a practice sitting down posture and and you know going inward that sort of stuff and and how would you say how would you introduce meditation to someone that's unknowing that maybe having similar experiences and Mm -hmm. do you need to go to classes do you recommend it or both what's your what's your preference and what can people do well i first say you know anything you do in life you can do in a multitude of ways um so you don't have to learn one you can you can totally do it self-directed like the same way you can learn to ride a bike on your own or you can get some guidance you might be quicker if you did it with some guidance um yeah. and you know we should uh, endeavor to learn from the people who have done something for 10 years even if they did it three three or four times more recently than you did um so it's worth learning from other people um but that should be partnered with an inward journey and you know so so not solely looking outside as well um I would say that meditation is a connection to yourself. It's, it's an understanding of yourself and where, where you really are. Like, where does Luke actually come from? Like, what is, you know, I, I think you described this in your last episode. Um, but it's more, I'd say, um, yeah, a connection to yourself, looking inward, being still and uh, changing from, you know, um, human doing to human being. So uh, less yeah. action and more inward stillness yeah you reminded me like something i always thought when you're saying learning from someone else because i've always sort of self-taught myself but i've only managed to do that through learning through others so i haven't done it on my own yet i've done many things on my own but i've always had the mindset that it's like if you learn from others you don't have to make you can learn from their mistakes or their experiences so you just make less of them and if you share yours others might make less of them and everything just becomes more efficient and therefore more effective um and people just get what they want quicker. And that drives me back. You mentioned the word self. How would you define self? What What's self to you? <laughs> How deep down the rabbit hole do we go? Um, all right. Well, uh, I Does think the rabbit have a self? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so conceptual, isn't it? <laughs> um, I think, you know, I think the self is just, it's just consciousness. It's just this uh, stream of thought or this, it's a development of life since since the beginning of time and the end of time, you know, it's, it's this, it's this continuous feedback loop of evolution. Um, we now call it consciousness and we call it, we, and we see it inhabiting, not just ourselves as human bodies, but also, uh, other animal bodies. We see it, we can even see it reflected in, um, systems of life like, uh, plants. So we can see how they're communicating through different signals and how the ecosystem shares, waste materials that turn into something else's food and sustenance and all these things. And this is just the consciousness um, stream of, uh, you know, flowing energy. And I feel like we are all tapped into that. We're all connected to everything just as a tree stands above the ground and is connected to a lot of things beneath the surface that you don't see. Um, And so I think that's a real kind of linear way to put it, but we are these um, evolved intelligences, that are united with everything in this universe so that's the self yeah. to me <laughs> that's why i described um, it. N- nicely put and like you said they're trying to get this across in minutes within a episode on a podcast <laughs> <laughs> yeah but n- yeah. nicely put and um Thank you. going back to learning sort of as well but what people or persons have influenced in your your life and in which ways so some main people um, obviously you might miss out on a few so yeah. make sure anyone that does listen that knows you no grudges but just who comes to mind like, so well, no judgment like who just floats to your yeah, mind in yeah, this yeah. moment as someone that's just made a difference in your life and it's made it more constructive say well you have you have luke oh so, thank you very uh, much uh, <laughs> so i wasn't no. expecting that but that's my <laughs> get a bit of selfishness in there 
Well, tick um, that box. Yeah. <laughs> podcast is finished. Selfless and selfish. Um, so, I mean, yeah, but really, truly, you you have you've made a big big difference in my life uh, in the most recent years, um, and that's because I, it, you know, and it links in because what I really wanted to say when you asked me this question is, well. I have turned to so many people and what I do is I really like intensely focus on uh, someone's teachings or some learning and just like really get into the nitty gritty of everything they've done and what they do and, and get those like overtone messages that they're, sh- that they're presenting. Cause if you look at any kind of public speaker or author, they'll have like a set, a key set of messages that they just kind of repeat and evolve throughout their material. And they add things yeah. because they're obviously evolving as they go through their journey. Right. So yeah. I was, always looking to different people um but you know i know around the time when we were um traveling together i was really into tony robbins and you guys ended up uh, looking at tony robbins quite a lot as well um but you know before then i think i was looking at alan watts quite a lot um before then i mean there are like uh taoist teachers like lao tzu and uh, i was looking in more of the ancient philosophers before the time of yeah. you but then before that it was more like of the uh, the the um the, the scientists like Nikola Tesla, Albert Einstein, you know, these, and these big names. And then, yeah. So, so there've been like kind of phases where I turn to different people, depending on the um, theme of my life at the time, uh, if it's scientific or spiritual or comedic or whatever. And what would you say? What, what do you feel you've been? Uh, and as I would put it is what, what you've been gifted. I see every presence, every person that's brought into my life. And this isn't how I saw it when I was younger, but every person is, is here to offer a gift and I'm here to give them a gift. And we're unknowing of what it is until we exchange and just do it with an open heart. Right. And um, do, do you see like there's been, like you say, an undertone in your own developments as the way your sort of information has been feeded in through these influences as to where your where your agenda, where your undertone message is in your development of your life so far. Do you see a direction in it? Yes, definitely. Um, it's, there's always, a since, since, you know, going through those, uh, inward journeys and looking to do things through meditation. Um, it's, you know, it starts off, I guess, uh, to, to a skeptic, you can call it like intuition or, um, coincidence and synchronicity and stuff like that. Um, those things start to partnership partner with you so you can kind of uh, get gain a bit more direction and you see that you have to learn something so i'm going to go back again and say that because you were an influential person to me recently um Mm -hmm. at that time i know i was really looking to learn more about anatomy and the body and how all of the things that i had learned that were more um spiritual metaphysical and uh, emotional and thought form based I needed to link those and ground them. I was in a state. So the theme of my life at that time was grounding. Yeah. So uh, finding a connection to nature. And subsequently we, we went out traveling and lived off the land, you know, together we were like foraging for food and doing all sorts of crazy things like building fireplaces yeah. in nature. And, and at the same time we were practicing so many exercises and routines for stretching the body, you know, we were doing alignments, all that stuff was in line with the journey and you never know what's coming. So, like predict the future or anything silly like that you you're just you're looking for something and whatever we look for you're going to find it if you start telling your brain to look for a certain shade of color or a certain object you're going to see it more in your day-to-day life you've probably passed it so many times before but because now you've told your subconscious to pick it up it, it works with you and so that's yeah. that's kind of how it worked so yeah it was all about anatomy and, and um, learning about the body physical things at the time yeah, and in the exact opposite way at the time, and I'll, I'll bring people into a little bit of our story, how we met, is because uh, we were both traveling at the time, bumped into each other um, pretty much instantly. I think we were just easily uh, got along and spoke and had good conversations. And I've noticed that with traveling, I speak to very few people, but when I do, it's always a much more in-depth, beautiful con- conversation. And um, met you and your love, Rita, and we, we just we ended up actually going, I think, for a couple of weeks together, moving to the same spots together. And they said being in the depths of nature. And then not long after that, lockdown started. And we actually got locked down together on a piece of land because we had to move off off the road. So we got that real intense dive in from being on the road, moving to now being locked up in a situation, but together. And that was really interesting. And um, for me personally, like during that time and when I first met you, what I was looking into more was I had been so physically orientated 
Um, but I was aware of, say, there was more to everything. And I needed to know, and I wanted to know more about what I can't see, say, and what I can't, um, like I said, the more metaphysical, the more energy, the more um, mind over matter type principles right. and just knowing more about them sort of things. And I was open to that. And you, 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 like you said, you appeared and had lots of knowledge and lots of information on that that gifted me. And then also like during lockdown, as I was going through processes in my own life of self, especially on the feeling side of things and actually feeling, I've always been a very heavy thinker, always thought a lot of thinking all the time and processing my thoughts and thinking, thinking, thinking. But from a young age, I tried to cut my feelings off because they were too painful. Mm-hmm. And during that lockdown, I got to sort of intensify my feelings, bring them to the surface, go through some dramatic events. Uh, you was a wonderful support, by the way, and really helped guide me through that. Um, so thank you very much for that. But and that process continued, and um, but yeah, that's where we was. So we both, like you said, got that exchange when you're open, I think, and uh, honest and pure. You just get a, a cleaner exchange and get what you want, what you're looking for. If you've got your mind set to that intention, yeah, that's um, right. And so, so to anyone listening, you know, if you have those moments where you're walking around and you just keep seeing that one person every time you're out, and you just see them, you're like, oh. They keep and they, you meet eyes with them, you know, go to that person. I guarantee you there's something that, that your mind or your subconscious is picking up on that is trying to show you you're looking for that because um, I've done that. And whenever I go to those people or do those things, uh, wonderful things come out of them. Under, unexpected, wonderful things. Yeah. I am. I've got another question for you here. If you could go back as you are now and meet your teenage self, and you get to sit down and have a conversation with yourself. What would your younger self think of you now? <laughs> well, I, as I explained to you, uh, so as I went through my teenage years, I actually became um, uh, all right, uh, an asshole, uh, just like any. I know. <laughs> I mean, I was a very manipulative. I was um, uh, very self-centered. I was looking to just do everything that's for the better of myself. I'm better than anyone else and da, 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 all this like and, and really seeking to just serve my own interests over anyone or anything um, because I you know had like the, the, the gift of the gab I could talk my way out of lots of situations I could um, you know do, do a lot of things um, and so I, I, I was really uh, centered around just kind of trying to, to get to get my way like quite narcissistic um, so I think if I met my teenage self um, he would probably have a lot of nasty things to say about me. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, I think if, you know, if, if my teenage self was met with my old self, would be like, wow, this is the one person I actually trust and want to listen to because it's me. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm not sure how that conversation would go. So yeah, um, it could be quite, it could be quite a funny one. Cause it, yeah. Yeah. But I probably, the only I, one you know, I will me, listen to is myself. Me knowing me, I could probably tell myself some things that, that would be, very um influential in changing some of those habits quicker but yeah things happen at their own speed and their own time um hmm. and yeah so everything nice. went well but yeah you know i think i think that's how the conversation would go down yeah nice and going back to lockdown now it's been i think it's over two years now since the sort of pandemic started and mm-hmm. um in which ways do you say that's changed you and do you have any particular methods and techniques that you've learned prior to that that have helped you like the meditation? Is there practices or things that you've done that have helped you during it? Because for a lot of people, it's obviously caused an immense amount of stress. There's more suicides than sort of ever before. There's more depression, especially in the younger generation. So for the for anyone out there that's struggling, like is there any methods or techniques or things that you've learned in your life that have helped you during this time? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well during that during that time literally i think just before we met you we had decided so this was i guess um let's say this is october in 2019 so um the lockdown started in spring of 2020 so about five months before that happened we me myself and rita had uh decided to uh not be so social we had always been these people that would go and start conversations and and you know, get, get a party going, get a group going together so we can like go and travel in a convoy and, and, you know, and and just experience life together as a group and and really get social. Um, So we decided not to do that. Uh, We decided to go the opposite way because, you know, when one, when you focus on one thing, something else gets sacrificed and what was being sacrificed was our like work ethic and our um, ability to kind of like create the funds and stability we needed 
So we were like running, uh, kind of running on fumes or running on air at that point. And we were like, okay, this is that moment we've got to stop uh, just trying to have fun and be social all the time. We got to start working on ourselves uh, and our businesses and pick them up again and all this stuff. So we just decided to do that. And then <laughs> we met you and you were the only two people. We were like, okay, well, let's actually kind of stay in contact because there's something really <laughs> working there. Um, so that's, that's an interesting part of that story on its own. But what I'm trying to get to is that we had decided to kind of isolate just before this whole thing happened. So when it came, it was a kind of like a blessing in disguise for us. And like, I know you said, it's caused so much pain and suffering for a lot of people. And I feel that as well. Obviously, you know, when you want to just go and fly somewhere, like you could do that before. You could just go wherever you wanted. But that, that changed. You couldn't just go to a shop without having to deal with hassle from, you know, whether it's uh, security or like law enforcement sort of stuff going on. Um, you can't just cross certain territories. So that and also if... But if we were in the situation where we were being social all the time and we, we were staying, you know, these social butterflies we were, if that happened, yeah. if that lockdown happened at that time, we would have been severely affected. And, 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 and you know, I'm not going to lie, like we've been through depressive days, depressive states for that go on for like a week or two during this time, even though we wanted this kind of quarantine and lockdown isolation um, uh, atmosphere. So, um the, the thing that's, that's really helped us get through it is, is when, you, when you can't go out, when you can't turn your energy outwards, just double down on the inward stuff. Like go, go and do those things you've been telling yourself that you want to do. And that's what we did. So I'll talk from my own experience. You know, I wanted to do more exercise. I wanted to do more meditation like on a deeper level. I wanted to go into more um, sort of arts and crafts. So those things that I'd been putting on the back burner for a while, but I didn't do them because... Oh, it's the weekend. I'll go out and meet some friends and, and <laughs> that sort of stuff. So um, I think there there have been some horrible realities to face, and what, some of the the worst fears that we have as humans is ourselves. So you know, the, the worst fear we have can be our own minds or what we can do to ourselves. So when when you are faced with that and you have no other alternative or very little uh, options, it's gonna you're going to face your demons. You're going to face the worst darkness you have inside you. And, and you know, that, that can be too intense and you can, you can get very depressed. You can get very angry with things. Um, at the same time, it can also make you um, face that and have the courage and overcome the obstacles. But like you say, it's, it's doubling down and going inwards. Like I've personally found that when before lockdown, I've been to places like ended up renting somewhere uh, that was out in the mountains I didn't realize how far it was how isolated it was and we had no phone reception no like tv no internet and um, it was over a 45 minute walk to get signal on a phone if I wanted to send family or friends a message mm -hmm. and Danielle was really sick at the time so I couldn't even get that opportunity to do it very often and um, it was during them times where you realize how much your sort of your balance has been uh, given to these other things that you balance yourself through people, through interaction, through watching a film, through going online, through so many external things you're balancing yourself. Um, while there's still an abundance of, say, external things there, like just being present in nature and watching the animals or breathing the fresh air and just being there, even if it's just in your garden or on your balcony and just being present in your life and not having any, anything else other than your own heartbeat and your breath and just appreciating it. That's and I found it. for yeah, me, them it. restrictions yeah. really brought that balance in for me. And them, them things helped me during lockdown and, and that progress and just to keep going. I think for a lot of people, that's, um, that's helped them. Like I said, meditation, I think, is growing a lot for people to have an inwards reflection during this time, I think, it's really helped. And you see a whole mindful sort of movement happening where people are just becoming much more uh, consciously aware and... Um, yeah, that is one of the reasons I created this podcast and the YouTube channel is to connect with people now because most people, even in an isolated situation, still have the internet, a phone, you know, still are able to actually connect in such ease and so quickly to such crazy uh, places. Yeah, like I said, I'm just, sitting just outside case, now. Okay. You're, you're hundreds of miles away and people could be listen, listening in thousand miles away. And uh, I think that's an incredible gift we have at this moment to be able to share and connect and you know, just interact with each other still. Yeah, it's very true. We, we become more self-empowered when we take time to process our own thoughts and really find what makes us tick, you know, uh, what makes us to react to things with certain emotions. 
and um you know when it's like that uh like indian proverb that says something about you know being the self-propelling wheel if you can and and, and same we we have this analogy you can say uh, you know you have to fill up your cup before it can overflow and spread to others um yep. that's what this time has been all about um and yeah so it's that you know that point of having um uh, having depression or being suicidal even to this point we are our own worst fears you know we have this ability to give ourselves whatever we choose and that's obviously um dependent on how we interact with the outside world as well um so if you if you tell yourself you're a bad person and you don't have the outside world to um pick you up and or show you something different or distract you from that then you can ha- you have to go and face that demon you have to f- you know face yourself have the courage to overcome the part of yourself that tells you that you're not doing things right uh, because we all have that um and you know and uh, everyone has gone through this in some to some degree to some extent um when you don't have support it's harder when you when you don't connect with others yeah, and i think harder and so yeah having this is yeah and it's finding that inner support of actually self-support and for me that's a, a self-love to actually have an inner love for yourself an unconditional mm-hmm. love and building that practice and that's a big part of what i share online and where, where if and where do you find say any sort of self-love practices specifically and is that something that you have had a, in your life a long time? Where, where's sort of self-love in your life and what does it mean oh, to you? I, I love myself in many ways. <laughs> <laughs> Not um, them ways. <laughs> <laughs> well, all, all, all the ways. That's what I'm trying to say. Always, it's, it's, yeah, it's always. multifaceted. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, like, like just on, on that degree, you do have to find yourself sexually attractive. You do have to find yourself as uh, someone you want to know and someone you want to be around. You should explore your body and, and say, oh, I, I like my hand. I know I've got that little weird freckle there, but I love that freckle. That's amazing. <laughs> and, you know, and these things make you unique. And, and you can choose, like when we're kids, you know, you can choose to see a, a difference as something that's um, to laugh at or make fun of. And, you know, or you can see it as something to celebrate and bring joy to. It's, it's both the same thing, just kind of different ways of going at it. Um, but, be, you know, beyond that, you know, doing, um, you know, having, having like self-love practice, even if you're just thinking of things that you did that you're happy about or something that you heard that was nice. It doesn't have to be you as the source of the, 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 the thing you're focusing on to give love to. Just giving like gratitude that you are, you're able to remember that moment or experience that color. You know, we, we, can, we can use comparison in a way that fuels us as well as you know to our detriment which is very very common we hear this talked about a lot by big tech companies in the media you are um, comparing yourself to all the other people on facebook who only post their highlights so obviously your life is crap compared to their highlights so um the other way you know you just you look at all this it's that's amazing i'm glad i i know these people i'm i'm so happy to to know all this stuff and i'm so happy i know this person i'm so happy i know you i'm so happy i had the parents i had and 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 because it brought me to be able to experience that and that's that's how we use that same mechanic for our for our self-love for our benefit oh nice and bringing it back almost to the question earlier when I said if you're if you could go back to your teenage self and having a conversation, if now yourself from five, ten, fifteen years, let's say, came back to visit you now, what would you like to see? Or what hear? Would I like to see. Ah. What would you like to see or hear from your future self? I I, I would be. Uh, in awe and just wonder to hear anything that uh, a f- you know future self would have to say because of their experience of the world but um, I would like to hear myself say that you know everything's great keep going <laughs> those like words of encouragement um, I don't know but also it'd be amazing to hear something like yeah the world totally changed in this amazing crazy way and I'm going to tell you all, the- all about it and you know I guess it would be more like a kind of um like watching a movie or something where you get to hear this like grand concept of a world that doesn't exist yet. Yeah. Uh, but then hearing that, you know, puts the power in my hands to change it, right. To have effective change because the butterfly effect. So <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But yeah, and do you I, have I, any, do you have any plans or things laid out for the next five, 10, 15 years that you'd like to share? Yeah, I, I have, um, I guess because I've always tried to, go and do something but things change naturally you know change is constant 
so nothing ever comes out the way you expect it to. But um, I always aim now to put my goals in a place that are a bit abstract, uh, but still kind of focused and refined. So, so let's say, for example, you know, I um, focus on um, putting out music. I really love music. I think music is one of the greatest uh, creations and things that we have as humans to um, to represent and reflect the universe in, in the harmonics of it. So, so I uh, really want to endeavor to do something in the field of music. And that is why I put that intention out there, but I'm not going to focus and say, I want to be like Jimi Hendrix or I want to be um, that band, that musician who plays yeah. keyboard at the Royal Orchestra you know, or anything like that. So, um, yeah, so that's why I would like to kind of keep it abstract, but also there's an intention and a focus. That you're going to give back in the way of music in some form, somehow the intention yeah, is there. Yeah, it's, it's enriched my life so much. So, yeah, I'd love to, to, to put it out there. And, and I think it's a great way and it, it goes, it expands more than just um, beyond music. It's poetry as well. It's, it's um, you know, like a art and a play of the different tones, you know, the, like the seven harmonics we, we have recognized can be scaled up and scaled down and you mm-hmm. can go inward and outward with them. You can, fr- you know, use them as fractals. So music is this amazing kind of um, play with the symmetry, with the dance of the overlapping frequencies of time and space. You know, you can, you can really code in all that stuff on a deep level if you want to. And some people do that. And it goes all the way up into you know, um, like making thoughts something that uh, you can, you can, you can project your feelings through uh, poetry, through through the through the words that you choose, um, yeah. rather than than you know taking some. You could put like like a picture says a thousand words. You can put some words into a song that can then say a paragraph. Yeah, it. like you say, and just an instrumental on its own can carry so much uh, sensation and feelings and change in it that you can be in one. Uh, mentality one state and just a simple song can just change everything mm-hmm. uh, within mm-hmm. seconds not even the whole song and so i think you can clearly see how it moves and changes people it's actually having a, a really deep conversation with someone uh, not that long ago and um, we talked for like an hour and it's really just deep conversation mm-hmm. and then we started talking about dance and music and i said to him had i have had the right beat right now and i said and we got up and had a little dance i said we'd be even closer bonded within that five minutes than we have through an hour of deep conversation. I said, music and dance is so powerful when it's in what someone could call good vibration, but like in that, you know, that just that yeah, proper sort of, like you say, the harmony, it really brings a bond, I think in people and really um, brings you to the moment. That's opens right, people yeah. up. Yeah. And brings it, brings them, brings them there and sort of in all, all, all of their essence sort of thing very quickly. Very true, uh, is it, we haven't quite ended yet, but I want to say how much I appreciate you for being here and being on this uh, chat podcast stream, oh, whichever way you'd like to call it. I've really enjoyed hearing your story and about yourself. And uh, is there anything you thought of that you haven't talked about or anything particularly you thought of prior to this when I asked you, is there anything you'd want to share or anything you'd like to cover or talk about? Um, well, I, I, there are always <laughs> so many ideas I want to go through. <laughs> like, like I've explained about my childhood, you know, I have this, um spray i want to go here and do that and it's like kind of chaotic i want to try everything new and i've kind of always endeavored to gather um, a wealth of experience i call it you know um by learning from as many people and different things as possible so you have like a generalist view of everything and that goes with the phrase you know um jack of all trades master of none sort of thing um but having having a is really good and having some things that you go toward in life uh really help and what we were talking about before in your last question, you know, I, I focused in on the music, but there are also other things in 10 to 15 years. Uh, I, you know, I would love to have a, like a center or a retreat for meditation, yoga and different practices like that. That's also something else that I, I work at and develop as an idea and look for like strings and streams to enter into. So by doing that, by having a few different focuses, uh, you're able to move with the tides of change of the external world and see what you're putting out and where that kind of locks in and links with the receiving end of someone else's journey or some other group's journey or just, you know, uh, life in general. So I, I, I like to kind of illustrate that point uh, where there's this, kind of, you know, we live in this dualistic world and we have like the, the good and bad, the ups and downs, the light and dark. Um, so, whatever it is in 
someone's life that they see them being imbalanced with you know i'm too this or i'm too i'm too much of that you know i do too much of that whatever it is you have a wisdom that's that goes to the polar opposite and it's about seeing that and making that clear and that's how we find the balance and we move in a the direction that is best suited to what we're doing to to how it makes it a united thing if that makes sense yeah, it think, might be too abstract but <laughs> yeah no, <laughs> and, and i think i can round it off it's always like it's always looking for that fulfillment of that glass you said earlier everyone's got to fill that glass up and they're constantly given their sort of insight into where they can fill it and they need to be able to make sure they're always looking for ways to what fills them what gives them fulfillment and everyone's going to have that unique way of looking but sometimes when you see the complete opposite of what you really don't like and it might make you really angry and angry at someone it's actually just showing you what what's for you what's for yourself what you don't need and what you don't like and then that's what you're going to contribute isn't that and what can you contribute where can you give and as you give you receive and you get that fulfillment. And I think for a lot of people, especially during this time, a lot more people, let's say, getting more mindful and getting, they're like cleaning that cup. They're emptying out the gunk in the cup. Yes. But they need to fill it back up with what do they contribute. And um, yeah, I'd love to see your, you flourish in the, in the music and contribute music that really brings that hum, harmony to people that music can, as well as, like you say, a retreat to just bring that meditation, bring that to people and see see everyone come together. And like you said, that, I think would give you a lot of fulfillment. It'd fill your cup to see us. Like I see you as a kind and compassionate person. And I don't think you can be kind and compassionate w- without want- wanting to serve others yeah, with, with something uh, that's going to bring them more harmony. Like you said, and the music seems to drive you a lot. And it there's does, not yeah. really many things more harmonic than music. Like I've talked to you a lot about anatomy and the spine. And like I see the body like an instrument. Mm-hmm, you know exactly, about tuning yeah. guitars and it's like if it's out of tune it's a horrible song no one plays it when it's in tune if someone can play it it's beautiful and everyone loves it it's like there's not much better sounds than someone playing a guitar that's in tune just a nice beat it's like a very hardly anyone's going to get angry with it or be yeah. kick yeah, off a I'm, fight I'm, or jump I'm out glad, the chair <laughs> i'm glad you said that because that kind of talks to what, what i just kind of illust- tried to illustrate at the end it was a bit too abstract of this this idea well there's music and, and, but i've also created um, a website for learning resources for energy work so it's called reikiacademia.com and that's going to include all of these you know like like as you described it I, I use that same concept the body is an instrument and it is it's a very finely tuned instrument and you get it into alignment and it becomes harmonic and um, so there's like a place for all of that right but that also as you've just made that connection to the music so in someone else's perspective or from the outside world you could see someone who maybe um is making a, like let's say like a rock song you, you might see them a bit like of an angry person or someone who's like a doing a hip-hop song you might see them a bit like angry at the world and they're doing all this like mm, 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 like you know being very loud and <laughs> yeah. and putting out these kind of like a uh, aggressive this range of human and... yeah yeah we have a range of emotion like we have a range of emotion and if you can channel your emotions in different ways that serves the same purpose and serves your balance that is an amazing thing to do and i believe that's an amazing thing to do and that's what i'm trying to do so even though you know i have this like musical side and i have this like uh, energetic side um in terms of the work i'm putting out they are united so they look like polar opposites but they're going towards the same goal and that's that's to be yeah. of service to humanity and to enjoy myself along the way <laughs> yeah and i think i think you can only enjoy yourself along the way when you're following uh, your own path and your own direction and when you come to them realizations of what it is that you want to serve and like you said and bringing in all them different aspects because it constantly we're constantly in sort of like a transition constantly evolving in our life and things like covid has shown us that we're not in control of the external world we have got some grasp of the internal world uh, but there is some things in the external world that you can still hold on to or try to build from and be constructive and connect with and like you said and not letting go of everything, but constantly optimizing uh, your sort of path and optimizing what what do you really want? I think it's a perfect time for that reflection and really taking in like, what do you want to give? What would actually make you enjoy that? I think the enjoyment's a massive part of of fulfillment. I don't think think you're ever going to feel fulfillment and be sad. I don't think they're they're sort of two opposites. Yeah, yeah, I think that's only when you're doing going against yourself. I think uh, when you're fulfilling yourself, you can't not the enjoyment's the byproduct of fulfillment. Say that it just feels good, it just feels right, and you just you can't help feeling good. 
Yeah, I agree. I, I have got for you to finish. We're near the There's 12 little questions and they're fairly right. quick fire. You don't have to answer them super fast, but some of them are going to be like a one answer question. If you feel like you want to talk a little more on it, you can. So are you ready for 12 questions? Yeah, oh yeah, I'm definitely ready to go. <laughs> I always right. love uh, talking to you. I think like um, we can go on for, for hours and hours, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's go through it. I'll, I'll try and be quick. <laughs> <laughs> what is your excited noise my excited noise oh i remember this my excited noise is like yeah wow <laughs> <laughs> right, if you could only choose one a dog or a cat oh um right now i would say oh I, right now i would say I can't choose this is the sort of thing. I don't want both. <laughs> a cat dog. <laughs> you remember that cat show, dog. Cat Dog? <laughs> yeah, I do remember. Oh, I was similar dog. age, so yeah, I remember that. <laughs> well, I, I have a dog now, so I'm going to say I would want a cat because I always want to go for the for the other side and experience the the thing that's not being experienced now. Um, but I, I really I really appreciate you know both both sort of mentalities and energies that they have. So yeah, I'm going to I'm going to stick with cat. I, I really enjoy cats' uh, perception okay. of life. <laughs> Right. What's your favorite color? Crimson red. Mm -hmm. What excites you creatively, spiritually, and emotionally? Well, music. We've already covered that, I think. Yeah. I yeah, I thought I, was, I, that, yeah. I assumed that was going to be. <laughs> and then, like, yeah. yeah. What turns you <laughs> off? Uh, turns me off, like as in puts me in a bad mood or like. Like yeah what just doesn't give you that <laughs> yeah no you can do both if you want but what, but it would be the same to be honest but yeah what does I what guess, turns off yeah. your creativity your spiritually and your emotions what turns it down hmm. i don't know i feel like i've tried to overcome so many things but i, I think uh, maybe um distortion or like loud noise or like like come some kind of uh, something that is abrasive to my mind uh and if i'm trying to be creative or do something and there's yeah. like a, a distortion noise. Like you said, or, an interest in it. Like that, yeah. To me, that synchronizes with you, your passion for music. So, in in yeah. harmonic is that the right word? In harmonic sounds. In harmony, yeah, or harmonics, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like that's just out of a uh, not in a rhythm, say, and a horrible distortion of sound that can interrupt all <laughs> other vibrations. And yeah, right, like being off beat. Yeah, <laughs> that, <laughs> that would that would like rub me the wrong way. Yeah, if I was sort of keeping a steady beat and then you know you get like someone come along and start making a load of bangs and clanks i'll be like oh yeah <laughs> well this gets it almost into into the next question what sound or noise do you love oh you know i really love that sound um of, of like a singing bowl or when you have uh like when frequencies of the same uh, bracket like overlay and you get like an overture you know that overture sound where um, you, it kind of like goes like, and you get this kind of resonance. Oh, and it sort of builds up when they go yeah, around, yeah. The, around the bowls. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, it's like 20 people all at the same time sang the same note in that, and you get that choir sound. That, that I really love that, that um, overlapping. What, hmm. Nice. What sound or noise do you hate? Oh, um, <laughs> you know those fire alarms that make the noise... Um, they're they specifically tuned to a frequency that is that is kind of similar to like a baby crying you know like that uh it's 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 outside of a harmonic that we would use in music typically um so it's like yeah that that fire noise you know just like Beep! it's like a really yeah. annoying tone um and I, that's, that's quite a good actually... impression i knew exactly what you meant <laughs> <laughs> i we had one of these in my university halls um and everyone probably had this experience who went to university and they'll know what i'm talking about someone comes home on a friday night or a saturday night and they think it's hilarious to set up <laughs> all the fire alarms in all of the dormitories so so every friday saturday night you know i remember waking up uh to to those tones and they were just blisteringly loud it was so loud that they would just wake you up um <laughs> even if you'd I don't know, taken 20 sleeping pills and drunk yourself silly like you still wake up it's... you're still gonna get you <sighs> Yeah, right. so that noise is kind of ingrained in my head. <laughs> what is your greatest fear? There's nothing to fear but fear itself. Uh, fear of, um, of, of, I guess, being stuck. Fear of, of non-movement, inaction, and uh, letting the moment pass you by, opportunities that are missed, that sort of thing. Yeah. And what do you challenge about yourself?
I'm always challenging myself to to learn more and do more to to uh, remove or replace the habits that I have that I feel are not um, optimized to my efficiency. Yeah, to put it in like logical terms, I'm always seeking to uh, do what has more love, what has a greater joy, and uh, brings more happiness to to the situation that I'm in. Nice. What do you love about yourself? Everything. One, give me one thing. It could be a characteristic. <laughs> it could be a physical attribute. It could be your hair. What? Well, um, okay. <laughs> well, I, I guess you could, I would say I like the sound of my voice, don't I? <laughs> no, I, I like. Um, yeah, I, I, I like. I, I like uh, my choice that I'm going to be cutting my hair off soon because I've grown this as a, as a choice to to let it grow out for it, like an ex- an experiment to to experience things, and uh, now. Um, kind of in this moment where uh, I'm kind of reverting back or changing back to uh, the appearance that I used to have. Uh, so, I, you know, because I, I really in, enjoyed the way I saw myself and the way I've noticed how people react to me so differently now with the, with the appearance I hold. Um, so, yeah, so I, I guess... So you're going to uh, go for that, you're going through that, you want to experience it now the other way. Like you said, it's a bit like yeah, the cat yeah, dog thing. Always, you want to experience what you don't to, have right now. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I made this intention to, to grow my hair out long uh, just because I'd never done it before. And I was like, well, I'm going to do it. And, um, and it's, been, it's been a very interesting learning experience. And, uh, and I knew I was going to come to a point where I cut it. And it was, for, it was actually for the reason of uh, shooting a few interesting um, music videos and other like little skits and things because I can use the filming time where I, ha- I have like various lengths of the hair and mix them all together, yeah. so it'll kind of make quite an interesting um, compilation of different... Oh, I look, I look forward to seeing it. <laughs> Be interesting. I actually have nightmares about, like, that I've had, like, a clean shave, or I've shaved oh, really? my head. <laughs> yeah, and I'm in the dream, I'm in real regret. I'm like, what have you done? <laughs> Someone's like, around the corner with a razor. <laughs> yeah, no, normally I'm just like, I've already done it, and I wake up, and I... I forgot that I've cut my beard off or I forgot I've cut all my hair off. And it's like in the dream, it's really like disturbing. It's like, not that I look bad or look horrible. I was used to have like no hair and used to have just a little goatee, but in the dream, it's really traumatizing. It's interesting. <laughs> Cause I know it how really long has... it takes to bring it back as well. <laughs> yeah. It's, <laughs> it's like, it's really shown how our appearances um, kind of really create an effect in the outside world, you know, because that's all that a lot of people see and they, and people put judgments yeah. Um, on on you based on how you look, so uh, it's 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 quite it's been really interesting, and yeah, I think that's uh, yeah. something speaks to the the inner mind about that. And just two more questions: What do you love in others? What do you love to see in others? I love to see it when when people uh, are themselves and they feel comfortable to like open up and. Um, act how they would on their own or like with their closest family that sort of thing um it's very i think it's very obvious to me when someone is holding something back or restricting themselves because of the fear of the judgment um yeah. so i really love it when when someone doesn't have that and yeah and they're just themselves as they are naturally or would be naturally and last question what do you love about animals if you love animals that is <laughs> yes uh, I, I do love animals go vegan and um i would say uh I, yeah I, about animals I, I love their um their openness like you know we talked about cats and dogs earlier and you know i love how um dogs have this just unconditional love for whoever they're closest to um and they they are so present and aware about what's happening now they're not thinking about the past you know they're not worried about the future um so i really love that presence that dogs have um and with 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 cats uh, I love their um, kind of um, what's the word I'm looking for, like a it's like a, like an omniscience or like um, a level of awareness about a, a situation, and they're very good at kind of um, predicting things or like seeing the way something is, and uh, and you know they have that like kind of sneaky mentality. They they they're very quiet and silent, very respectful of. Yeah. Um, I very much like the way cats can be almost like you can see so much is going on yet they also look in such a meditative state and then Mm -hmm. they can be so quick to action when needed sort of like it's that flexibility and dogs as well they just have amazing uh, flexibility from rest to energy that I admire that I want (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Oh yeah, I mean that that's really interesting. That waking up first thing in the morning. That's something I didn't mention from my childhood. I did a paper round when I was quite young. And I was uh, waking up at 5 a.m. every morning to uh, to the sound of Michael Jackson or Jackson Five. Uh, Can you feel it? <laughs> <laughs> that song. That got you out of bed. When yeah, was the last so, time so you... I developed this this that, that ability, like 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 you do in the military. You just get up. Yeah. You, you have to get up, and you just you can just be running. Like you have to just run that same minute. Um, it's it's really liberating. So yeah, if anyone you know like yourself, you want to try and do it, just do it. Like, it's really really good. Yeah, well, you know, it's very interesting. That's sort of why I had to learn because I've always been on the chase for more energy and just more function. And um, it was actually realizing how much energy is in the feeling and sensation of excitement alone, anticipation and excitement, excited anticipation, should I say. And one example that works well for me is remembering like Christmas when you're a child and you can wake up earlier with no alarm um, and you run downstairs and you're just full of energy, like you're so energized because of your excitement for the day, mm-hmm. no matter how it goes. Or <laughs> you've just got this yeah. abundance of energy that's there and all it is you're excited. So for me, it's like if the energy starts to drop, maybe you're not excited about what you're doing. And again, showing you d- your direction or your path or are you doing what should fulfill you and therefore give you enjoyment and excitement to look forward to doing it and having more energy. Yeah, it's a, it's a really but, good uh concept i'm I just really just reminded me of um there's a, a youtube channel called pick up limes and they really focused on that especially they, now they do a lot of food but back in the early days they really focused on that mentality of creating your morning so before you go to bed you know just the simple act of like preparing something to do with your breakfast or having having it easier for you so that you know like if you drink coffee your coffee's ready in the pot or your breakfast some, some least resistance in the morning to yeah keep, and you and you look keep forward the flow to going mm-hmm yeah. yeah, I think, like you said, just the music, same for me when I was a child, Michael Jackson, even to this day, a bit of Michael Jackson, different songs, like, gives you energy, you know, mm-hmm. it gives you some yeah. uh, some inspiration and uh, not even inspiration, like you said, it's that motivation, it gets you moving, it gets you actually wanting to, to go. That's true, yeah, emotional, emotional concepts. Uh, and it, yeah, very, and back to music important. again and the power of music. Like you say, I've tried lots of different, lots of different diets and it can just be a bit of music that can give me more energy than any uh, food gives me in an instant you know you can put on a bit of music and have an abundance of energy mm-hmm. yeah. or i can eat all different types of food and i'll be saying oh no i might get energy in half an hour when it digests or an hour or two and it, it doesn't always happen you're thinking oh no that it's tomorrow when you get the energy from that food or you can put on some music that you really enjoy that has a certain rhythm and the energy is there ready to grasp and go and i yeah. found that like that having good music in the morning really does uh really does help with the energy in the morning that's what i found to get my morning started good walk outside and uh, listening to some nice music where it's just in- instruments playing instrumentals of real instruments makes it such a nice sound or it could be yeah, songs I from will, the childhood but i will apply that in the coming days so yeah try it mornings. out let me know how it goes all right so that was the end of this podcast i hope you enjoyed being on here thank you again for um putting up your time your time is your energy and your energy is your life so thank you for some of your life thank you and i hope others enjoyed it too Thank you so much for being here and listening to The Selfish Podcast. I'm your host, Luke Greenheart, and I appreciate you being here. Don't forget to check out my YouTube channel. Just search Luke Greenheart on YouTube. You'll find me. Check out my website, lukegreenheart.com. Have an amazing day and stay tuned for more episodes. I'll be interviewing guests on their path of self-development, their path to self, getting to know them in much more intimacy, much more depth, sharing and connecting with all so we can have a much more blissful, joyful and productive life together. All right, much love. Have a great day. Thank you.